Aftenen. Welcome to this edition of Dufferin Life. I'm your host, Tina Avery. Thank you so much for tuning in. So we're going to be talking about something that I may not know a lot about, a little tiny bit about, but I have a lovely lady who's been on this show many, many times before, Yasmin Slater from Credit Valley Conservation. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be back. So we're talking about the Island Lake Bass Derby. That's right. Okay, you got to tell me all about it. What is it? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Friends of Island Lake, which is... Uh, a fundraising group that support projects in the park. Mm -hmm. This is their 13th annual Bass Derby okay. they're hosting this year. And um, I just wanted to come on <clears throat> and give you a little bit of information about it. So it's happening July 15th and 16th. Okay. Um, so you can register for one day or both days. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, an adult league and a youth league as well. Okay. So a, a competition. So the adult competition is $50 a day or $80 for both days and youth is $10 each day. Okay. So they're kind of mini derbies each day for the youth so there'll be prizes awarded at the end of each day for the youth categories okay. and then the adult derby is um, everything said and done on the second day. So is the goal of the derby to catch the biggest bass, the most bass, different types of fish? What, yep. what, what is so, it? Yeah, so predominantly we have largemouth bass and okay. that what, that's what gets entered the most. So okay. it is a catch and release tournament. So mm -hmm. anything that people enter gets, we put back in the lake, Perfect. which is really important because mm -hmm. at Island Lake we encourage catch and release to have sustain the population we have. And I think that's why it makes it such a fun tournament because we have such a great population of bass in the lake. So okay. how we, uh, it's a combined score, so it's based on the weight in grams mm -hmm. and the length in millimeters. So okay. we take those two measurements and add them together, and that's the score that gets entered for each uh, participant. Okay, so if you're coming out for the day, do you just continually catch and release, and then you record your like you record them all, and then the biggest one is the one that counts? Um, no, so you just bring them in, so okay. you can judge yourself on mm -hmm. your boat. So we do require every en uh, participant to have a live well. Okay. So that keeps the fish alive while they're, you know, catching. Because some fishermen have, will go out for the day okay. on the boat, and mm -hmm. then just, they'll bring in their ent their biggest entry at the end of the day. Okay. Um, but we only enter, it's not a combination of how many you enter, it's just the largest ah, one that you enter. Okay. Gets so you just got to keep trying and trying keep until you trying. get the big one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it can get very exciting. Last year, uh, the first place, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, came in at like 2 o'clock on the second day. So oh, wow. it was like a nail biter <laughs> right to the end, which makes it fun. It does, too. for sure. You really yeah. have to enjoy fishing, of course. We, yes. I was saying that I know a little bit about it because my boys like used to like to fish off yeah. the dock at, uh, when we used to go to cottages and that sort of thing but I'm not uh, a fisherwoman, a fisher yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so a lot of people bring their own boats mm -hmm. um, we just we don't allow gas powered motors on the lake so people do have to have trolling motors if okay. they do have a gas motor it just needs to be tilted out but we do do rentals. Okay. So we have some trolling motor boats we have canoes kayaks a lot of people bring their own kayaks to do oh, yeah. oh, and people do fish from shore too so okay. and they have we've had winners on the podium. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. I can't imagine fishing from a kayak. I, I think I just have this already this balance <laughs> issue about falling in. Yeah. It just, but I mean, fishing is such a relaxing and mellow. It's not like, yes, you're trying to catch as many as you can to see if you get yeah. the biggest one, but at the same time, it's, it's fun mellow. to be out, yeah. out on the lake all day, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit of peace. But then if, I guess if you get the, like if you're on the top three and you're like, okay, is anybody going to catch? You're like, it's nail biting. <laughs> anybody catch something bigger than me? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool that you can do it from shore as well. I didn't yeah. even think about that. I was thinking you'd have to yeah. rent a boat or have a boat. or. I mean, obviously, success is higher on the water, mm -hmm. but we do have winners come from shore, too. So Okay. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, this is showing my lack of knowledge. So do people mainly use, uh, like, lures, or, do, like, do people still use worms, like, or is it beneficial yeah. for one or the other? So I did bring some fun things with me to mm -hmm. show you. So... You just maybe pull something out of there. All right, without <laughs> catching my finger on without it. Without catching your finger. Absolutely. Oh, I'm hooked on two here, I oh, think. Oh, you got two. I do. I've hooked something with my one. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Perfect. So. so the lures I brought with me are really good at Island Lake. Okay. So these are tested by staff. This is what they use when they're out there. So this is what they tell me. Okay. So this is a crankbait. It kind of mimics a crayfish. So it it's about five feet underwater. Okay. So when you're reeling in, it kind of acts. It hops along the bottom. So oh, that's okay. a good one for um, for bass and for pike. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I'm going to put this one over here. Yep. So I don't re-catch it on something else. <laughs> And then we're going to go to this one here. Yeah, so oh, that's a crazy top water looking. lure. Mm -hmm. So if you hold it kind of... From here? Yeah, so this one here like that. Ah, okay. Okay, so it'll, when you're oh, pulling it okay. in, the water, it skims the surface of the water, and the tail will spin and make bubbles and noise and attract fish that way. So this one's also good for bass and pike. Awesome. Yeah, but that's a top water. Okay. So if it's really weedy, that's a good one to use. Okay, now I'm going to... Be very careful here. This one yes. I think is still. There's two in there. That's a darker one, and there's a lighter one. This is a spinner bait. Okay. So this one acts so it'll pull through the water like this, oh, okay. and this will spin around, and it mimics a tail flash on a on a fish. Oh, okay. So the darker colored ones are good for overcast days, and then the lighter one in there that's good for brighter days. And this is like a below water. Um, okay. That's lure very as well. cool. You know, and. I, I guess this is just again once again showing what I really don't know. You know, you just I just remember little things they were so easy looking that you yeah. just throw in, but I didn't realize that there was different types of lures for different types of fish and what yes. it is. So. so we at Island Lake we only allow spinner baits and these kind of lures to be used after um, pike season opens. Okay. So when we first open in the spring, we it's really good for black crappie and okay. pan fish. Um, so for that um, so yeah, so that one's for like on a lighter day. Okay. So just like the other one we just talked about, that's just a different color. They come in all kinds of colors, but okay. a lighter one's good for a brighter day. Oh, and this okay. is for Island Lake. Some people may have different successes with different colors yeah, okay. at other lakes, but this is what works at Island Lake. This is so very cool. Yeah, I'm and if you want to go for panfish, so like crappie and perch and mm -hmm. things like that, traditional bobber, hook and, mi and worm, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have to have somebody ripping up the worms for me and oh, putting yeah. them on. Yeah, that's just, yeah. You get used to it. Yeah, that was <laughs> kind of the thing that I did with my boys. Either dad does it or yeah. you do it. And uh, yeah. But I'll sit there and help you do whatever yeah. else you want to do. So you have some excitement. You have a contest or a draw, I believe. Right? Yeah, so um, in that bucket too, yes. So this is a bait casting reel. Okay. Um, and so we, um, this year the Derby is, spo one of our sponsors is Rapella. Okay. So they donated two of these um, and then two bait casting rod combos. So it, this whole thing here. Okay. And we have two of these and two um, reels. Okay. And so we're doing a raffle for them nice. to help raise money for their friends as well in the work they do at Island Lake. So the tickets are $5 each or five for twenty dollars and they can be bought at the rental shop at Island Lake. Okay. Uh, up until the Derby and then the last day of the Derby we'll do a draw, draw prize at the award ceremony. And I'm assuming there are many different types of yeah. Yeah so these are <laughs> these are casting reels. Okay. Um, so they're so some you'll see these but you also see ones that spin in a circle and mm -hmm. that's a lot of traditional like entry level. This okay. This is more of a you'd use it more for precision so like if okay. you so, so one of uh, one of our friends of Iron Lake, he's like, I've had one of these rods forever, and I still can't master it. So, it's uh, it takes certain skill. Yeah, right? but so. it's a it's a really nice rod. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Real. And then we also have um, so these are things like you know if you don't if you still want to support the friends, but you don't really want to win a prize like this or mm -hmm. fish or anything. We do have um, we are selling hats too okay. that are. Um, that have the Derby, our Bass logo on it, and then our website on the back. So these are $25. That's amazing. And they can be bought at Island Lake. We have them at Terracotta Conservation Area and uh, the Cheltenham Badlands. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I so these it. are just different ways that people can support the Friends of Island Lake and the work they do at the park. Well, yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, more about them and yeah. some of the things that they do do and, and how, they, how they support the park. Yeah, so they actually... Um, were the masterminds behind the trail that go the Vicky Barron Lakeside Trail, the one that goes all the way around. So they did all the fundraising okay. to help get that trail along with grants. That's how we put that trail in. So they for ten years they worked on that and raised over one point five million dollars and over ten thousand volunteer hours That's on site doing stuff to get that trail in. So they are very important to 
the amenities and building things at the park. So they also supported the covered bridge that is at Island Lake, mm -hmm. the natural playground um, that's Island, at Island Lake, and then just recently in a partnership with um, the Orangeville Library and the Halton Libraries, mm -hmm. we've put in Tales in the Trail and the Friends supported the installation of that too at the at Island Lake. So they do a lot it. of good work. They do a lot of great work, yeah. And I think, you know, and, and, and people don't realize like when you said $1.5 million, like that, that's a lot of money to raise through grants yeah. through the community. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, are there, can people get involved with the Friends of Island Lake? Yeah, for sure. We're always looking for new, for new members. Um, and uh, we are looking for volunteers too. Like if you just want to help out at events, maybe you want to kind of try and try and see what the friends are about. You can come and volunteer at the Bass Derby too. We're still looking for volunteers for that as well. And then we do a lot of community events too. Mm -hmm. So we had Seniors Day where we invite the seniors out and do music with them and like have some treats and take them on a little tour of the park and help them get around the park too because some people have mobility issues or not able to get out, right? Absolutely. So and it's important. Like those people want to go out and see everything and, and and do yeah, everything as well. So exactly. the fact that you have the ability to uh, to make yeah. it accessible is really important because accessibility yeah. is yeah you know it's key. Well, yeah, and helping yeah. people and nature, people connecting with nature just lifts your spirit. That's why I'm involved in the parks, right? <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Like I mean, just even walking now, I, I don't, I've never, and oh, okay, in 25 years, I've never done the whole like the, all, all the way around, but the trails are just so beautiful and there's spots to stop and mm -hmm. sit and just relax and you know, you don't realize the difference it makes when until you're out there doing yeah. it and then you, you exactly. see. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so the next big project, so what the friends are starting their next fundraising round for is actually we're going to um, change a, the route a little bit of the Lakeside Trail. Okay. So where, um, I'm going to probably talk a little jargon here and people that have been there know but people that haven't don't know but where our south dam is there's the dam house and where our entrance road is where you come in and drive into the park there's mm -hmm. a very steep switchback trail and goes up a hill so mm -hmm. we're going to bypass that and bring the trail along the side of the lake so creating a new boardwalk on the east side all the way up to where the new crane gathering space is going to be which is our first odom on the credit valley trail for okay. indigenous space so um it'll connect there so this is this is a, a, a five five year project okay so it's going to take some time to raise the money for that because it's all boardwalk pretty much mm -hmm. um, but this is the first step the first step yeah first step. that's what it takes right it's just yeah. getting in there and it, you don't realize how long it takes and how much it takes but um yeah. you know if you want to support the friends of island lake and credit valley conservation and um you can actually also make a donation right yes yeah yeah for sure and um if they want to register for the derby it's islandlakederby.ca um, and then the foundation is also linked to the foundation page where they can just make a donation to to any of the work that we do in the watershed. Yeah, and if you, you know, not everybody can make monetary donations, but go out and support by just being a part of what's happening at mm -hmm. Island Lake. Like I think that's so important. It's a part about being part of the community. Yeah, or come and volunteer with your friends and then you can give back in that way, right? Wonderful. Yeah. Yasmin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, it's been fun. And don't you go anywhere, we'll be right back. I got lost what I was going to say there. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hey, I'm Chef Corey Dern, host of a show on Rogers TV Georgina called Cooking with Corey. Join me bi-weekly for brand new episodes where I teach you not only what to cook, but how to cook. On this show, we have cooked almost everything. Things like Japanese udon noodles with tofu, chicken on the rocks, zucchini fritters, and even grilled cheese. <laughs> There's only one thing missing, and that's smell vision That's Cooking with Corey, right here on Rogers TV Georgina.
Welcome back to Different Life. If you're joining us, thank you for tuning in. Um, we're going to talk about something about creating awareness, and we're talking about a new topic today that we haven't had, we haven't spoken about yet. So June is Brain Injury Awareness Month, um, and I'm happy to introduce my next guest, Andrea. She is from Mind Forward Brain Injury Services. You got it. I did. That's right. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. It's great to it's great to have you here. I mean, years ago, I used to um, participate in uh, walks that used to happen in May and June to, to help with uh, creating awareness for brain injury. Um, but I'm glad that you're here. Um, and let's talk about let's start at the beginning from maybe what an acquired brain injury is. Sure, an acquired brain injury is an injury to the head area, and it affects um, every year about 150 thousand people wow. I'm sorry every day that's about 3.5 seconds um, every 3.5 seconds somebody's affected by one and uh, there are traumatic or non-traumatic brain injuries so it could be everything from a car accident a fall mm -hmm. particularly with elderly individuals or children and uh, aneurysms strokes so it really is something that can affect anybody at any time so. are there are um, I mean because I would imagine there would be some symptoms that maybe not like mm -hmm. jumping out at you like something like a stroke or something like that that would automatically that may kind mm -hmm. of people could look for with regards to brain injury if they've fallen and they're not sure? Right, well I always uh, said this in the autism world, which I've come from for 20 years, that when you've met one with autism, you've met one with autism. And it's the same for brain injury mm -hmm. because the symptoms dependent on where the head injury occurred, um, how it occurred, how severe the trauma was, it can affect people in many, many different ways. There's, there are behavioral uh, challenges that some people have, their personality changes, language barriers, um, cognitive issues, memory loss, um, it, and it really does look different uh, person to person. Mm -hmm. A lot of the issues that some of our clients have are mobility issues, not being able to ambulate, being wheelchair right. bound as well. Okay, because uh, I would imagine, I mean, sometimes, like, I mean, we fall, we all fall, we've all had, or we've all bumped into something or been smacked in the, like, s hit right. with something in the head, and I don't think it really, um, resonates with people that like it's you're protected by your skull yes your brain is but it's still a very like sensitive absolutely thing and absolutely can be and injured easily right exactly and some of the statistics out there they don't even account for concussions or minor injuries or those falls and people might have a head, head injury and not even realize that they have one mm -hmm. and um, I think that's the most important message that I would have is that the awareness is not necessarily there of the prevalence the lasting effects and how we really do need to take care of ourselves because it's something that can come at any time from a vehicle accident to fall uh, there's uh, just accidents bumping into a wall and mm -hmm. you don't realize it. Something you might have done 10 times before, but that one time you're causing injury to yourself. That could be life lasting. Well, I, I do have a friend of mine that um, had some serious injury and she had fallen, but she didn't realize from the fall mm -hmm. that uh, how hard she had hit her head. And, you know, she went to the hospital and she was in the hospital. It's, it's a big, long story we're not going to get into. Right. But, um, I, you know, a year later when she was seeing somebody else, they said, you know, you have a brain injury. And she's like, you know, I've noticed how forgetful I am and how I'm not remembering things. And yes. she didn't put the two and two together because she had had that fall. Mm -hmm. But there were so many other things that happened in the fall that somehow it kind of got overlooked and missed. No, absolutely. And that's a very common side effect, uh, short-term memory loss and speech effects, um, thinking, just ab ability to focus, and uh, that's just one of them. But it really mm -hmm. depends on the individual, the fall, where they were injured as well. Right. Some people can go through lives and you know have chronic headaches and not realize and put the connection together. It's from a brain injury. But and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just now I'm going to make everybody paranoid that when they bang their head, <laughs> they have a brain injury. But I mean, go it's better it to be more aware, right? Absolutely. Like it's always better to ask questions than Absolutely. anything else. So let's talk about Mind Forward and the Great. services that you provide. So who are you and, and what type of services okay. do you provide? Nice plug for Mind Forward. Thank you for that. <laughs> We're a wonderful not-for-profit agency and we serve clients all through Ontario. We're primarily, primarily situated in the Peel now Peel, Halton and Dufferin areas and uh, we have day programs so we serve clients uh, actually in Orangeville we have a setting here where we have day programs for clients who are able to live in the community but they come in for recreational activities social events we really cater the events to those clients who need to uh, have some community integration and socialization we also have assisted living homes so okay. group homes 24-7 mm -hmm. care and that's um, throughout we take clients throughout Ontario but we're prim primarily 
primarily in the Peel region right now with our homes. Okay. We have a seniors program and uh, we're very proud to say we were the first brain injury program to partner with a long-term care facility, which is wonderful because some of those uh, individuals, those adults in those homes would not be able to be there without the supplemental support. They mm -hmm. have behavioral issues or just uh, challenges that would not be able to be managed without our extra support coming in. So. And that's one thing about brain injury is it affects every everybody, right? And there are a lot of our clients um, anywhere with brain injury that, um, and the majority of them have mental health issues that come from this as well. Right. It could be PTSD or depression and anxiety. So that's another service that we need to really advocate for because it's not just the brain injury treated medically. It's a long lasting life time right. um, event and it really spreads to every part of their lives. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about that too because I would imagine um, that there's a, there's a stigma um, attached with brain injury. I mean, we, we, we're, always, we're trying to create awareness, we're trying to talk right. more about it, we're trying to make people more comfortable about talking about different things in their lives and mental illness and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that really must affect um, the people that are suffering with brain injuries. No, abs stigma. absolutely. Th so there's just, a, a, I think it's with a lot of disabilities or um, tragically medical events that happen to people where it's a label and you have a brain injury so you don't think right, you're not smart anymore, you can't talk and there's, that's why I made that statement at the beginning is you really don't know, you have to really look at the individual and somebody's issue might be fairly minor and it's really they're struggling with their memory loss some people they've lost the ability to walk and we really need to understand that some of these these are people these are this is you me your neighbor everybody knows somebody with a brain injury mm -hmm. and tomorrow you had a full yesterday you had a full career family life everything was copacetic and tomorrow you were just a, the same person with a brain injury. You're not a different person. No. There's something to treat. Yeah, and I think you you talked about, you know, um, supporting uh, the people in the community. And I would imagine, like, because I just, like I said, I, I get stuck on the stigma thing because it really bothers me that um, there are so many people that, you know, you just, like, okay, well, they have a brain injury so that they, they can't do this. But there are right. people that are functioning daily lives and living with a brain injury. And, Absolutely. You know, that may not even feel comfortable telling people because they think that there's... A stigma attached to it. Absolutely, absolutely. That their cognitive functioning is be, has been compromised, and they're not going to be have a personality, or they're not going to be able to uh, answer questions and things like that. Absolutely, but that's just completely not true. It affects everybody differently. Yeah, absolutely. And there are the severe cases, obviously, and yes. um, you know, and I think that it's just so important. It's all about inclusivity, and you know, and you see, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to, when you see people walking or you know that aren't able to walk on their own coming down right. the street and saying good morning and hello and having normal conversations because exactly. it's all about being inclusive. And we live in a wonderful community here in Dufferin, um, and it is great here. you know, it's it is what it is. But you still, that's why we talk about these things out loud on the show right. to, to make people aware. So I. You also have programs for the caregivers as well, do you not? Yes, we have a caregiver service and uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about how a brain injury is not just that for that person, it really affects every aspect of their lives. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the mental health components, the PTSD, the, the family life is greatly affected. Uh, they're actually more prone to homelessness and uh, drug abuse and things like that. And unfortunately we see a lot of family members who are really struggling trying to cope because some of the clients have a personality that's completely changed. They're unable to care for their children or be the spouse that they were before. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's really impactful. So we do pull them into services, psychological supports, uh, social supports, and uh, groups. And we have a really great clinical team that works with them as well as the client. And I think that's a really important component. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, there's been people who've come on the show and we talk about the support for, you know, people, you know, the caregivers for Alzheimer's, the caregivers for all these different types of things that affect everybody's lives so completely. Um, and there is stress and burnout for those people oh, that, are, absolutely. that are that are that are putting their heart into taking care yeah. of either a family member or being hired to, t to help a family, you know, take care of the individuals in their home. Yeah. But it's, it's a very stressful job. It is, and that's the heartbreaking part when they just don't have the capacity anymore, whether it's burnout or the resources aren't there for them, and that's what we struggle with with brain injuries. There, we need more resources to support clients and their families. and. Um, the last thing we want is to see a family broken apart and mm -hmm. somebody to go to a residential or a, a assisted living 
location because the supports weren't there for the family to take care of them. So as much as possible, we try and keep the family intact and try and bring the, the, the services to the home. So we will do home services as well. And okay. Um, it's very broad, so um, I could go on forever about <laughs> all of the things that we do, but we really have to wrap around supports to make the family unit remain together. Yeah, as much I mean, as I think that would be one of the most important things for sure that right. you want to make sure that uh, people are well taken care of and, and right. it's the whole family, not just the person with the injury. Exactly. So if somebody were looking to uh, find out more about the services or how, do, how does somebody apply for any of the services that you do offer? Directly to our website, to me directly, my, my number is on there, it's mindforward.org okay. and um, all of our services are listed there and we have uh, the links to the intake so if you do want a query or you have somebody, a loved one or yourself, you would go to our intake number and uh, the responsiveness is great and you'll get all the answers you need. Yeah and I think, I think there's something too to be said to encourage people that if you're not sure about something, ask the questions. Exactly. You know, like, you know, yes. my, let's say for, I'm just doing, this is an example, like my mother fell down the other day and all of a sudden now, you know, you have that, she's forgetful or something's happening or mm -hmm. something's changed. Um, you know, it's better to reach out and, and inquire right. and get that information rather than waiting until these symptoms probably build and, and, and get yeah, worse. Yeah, ex exactly. And a medical assessment would be your first stop for mm -hmm. an injury like that. And we would definitely work with the hospital system. Um, and a lot of our clients have come from the hospital system and we work very closely with them to after their discharge or they become outpatient, they um, are supported by us. So either route, if you're not sure, you can call mindforward.org or contact mindforward.org or go to your healthcare provider. If it is if it is an, uh, an injury that you've sustained and you're not sure, that would definitely be the safest bet first. Absolutely. And to support something like Mind uh, Forward, um, I'm you said that you're a not-for-profit organization, not for profit. so obviously there is a need for donations and and absolutely in order to sustain and build on the support that you you give other people. Yeah, absolutely. So with these kind of services, we are dependent on funding, and um, it's limited. It is. There are a lot mm -hmm. of great causes out there, and government funding we know is not it doesn't just grow on trees. And uh, we've been well supported to sustain the services we have there is not a lot of room unfortunately to grow and move and expand as the wait list grows as the need grows as our population grows and that we we've had to think really creatively through grants and fundraising just to get that additional support mm -hmm. to bring in more staff so we could serve more people so there's no profit making in not-for-profit it's uh, purely to serve as many people as possible wonderful Andrea I want to thank you so much for joining me today thank you it was great and thank you for tuning in. Until next time, bye-bye. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. After a night out with your friends, not having a plan for a safe ride home can leave you in a bad spot. You could end up riding in a police car, an ambulance, or a hearse. These unplanned